Today's episode of Inside Gaming Daily is sponsored by Audible. You can get a free 30-day trial by going to audible.com slash inside gaming or texting inside gaming with no space to 500 500. Thank you, Audible. Hey everyone, welcome back to Inside Gaming Daily for Tuesday. Hey, that's right, it's Hi. Tuesday. And uh, Activision surprised a lot of people earlier this year when it and Bungie announced they were splitting up. Bungie was taking Destiny 2 away for good. Say it isn't so. Well, apparently it surprised some Activision investors too <laughs> because a law firm is saying it started a class action lawsuit oh. claiming that the publisher made materially false and misleading statements regarding the split with Bungie. Uh, even though Destiny fans cheered Bungie for taking the reins of the series back, oh. they took it back. Activision investors were not pleased with no. the announcement at all. The publisher's stock dropped immediately after that announcement. Tell us more about this uh, law firm that's looking into it, Lawrence. Yeah, it's cool stuff. Uh, <laughs> I mean, everyone cheers when Activision gets sued, so whatever. Back. Oh. They took it back! So a New York law firm is looking for investors that bought shares of Activision between August 2nd of last year and January 10th to sign up. Not quite sure what the investing equipment equivalent of ambulance chasing is, but it kind of sounds like this is it. <laughs> Welcome to America, I guess. We actually have someone in that window in this very room. That's right, I bought shares of Activision August 10th. Why? <laughs> Activision, EA, and Take-Two, I bought shares of around that time. Okay. Hey, they're all in the sh now. <laughs> a number of firms are racing to possibly file a class action suit against Activision before a deadline later this month. Yeah, no one has filed a suit yet. Okay. They're all just sniffing around to find plaintiffs to sign up, like Bruce. I don't know that I'm gonna sign up, I'm gonna be honest with you. Get uh, your 10 bucks, dude. Yeah, it was yeah. like, it's like no money it's gonna take all. like three years. Now, here's a quick rundown of the backstory. Bungie and Activision announced back in January that they were ending an eight-year collaboration and that Bungie would be taking over all publishing rights for the Destiny franchise. And it was no secret that Activision wasn't pleased with Destiny 2. Activision officials had been saying that the game wasn't making enough money yep. and that the recent Forsaken expansion had underperformed. Uh, Lawrence, what did the Activision COO say? Yeah, this is COO Cotty Johnson, which oh. is a great name. Cotty. Just imagine every quote like he's rolling his thumbs through suspenders. <laughs> I said that Forsaken did not achieve our commercial expectations and there's still work to do to fully re-engage the core Destiny fan base. That guy's uh, probably from Santa Monica. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Just a few months later, they announced the breakup. Oh, uh, investors weren't happy with the news, of course, uh, because immediately after the split was announced, Activision stock dropped, tanked 7%, and since then, it's only gone lower, which is absolutely true. It's only <laughs> a single digit number. Anyway. No, 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 it went, it's much gone much lower than oh, 7%. Oh my. It's dropped by about half. And it's stayed there. Well then, cue the lawsuits. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the firms looking into the class action lawsuit is called Kuzniki. Yeah, is that, right? that sounds Kuznicki right. Kuzniki Law, PLLC. They're a securities litigation firm based in New York State that does a bunch of these on behalf of investors. Yeah, their website says they represent investors, quote, in complex class action litigation seeking recovery of investment losses for shareholders of publicly traded companies, end quote. Yeah, they must be really fun at parties. Uh, lawyers are always fun at parties. Your Honor, at 8.49 p.m. the defendant completely ran out of ice. You'll find the flyer promise, quote, refreshing drinks. I asked you, how refreshing? Refreshing Kenny room temperature, yeah, your shot really be. We would know that they're pretty refreshing. We've had a lot of those. I wouldn't uh, call them refreshing in the AM part of the day. Uh, cause Nikki Law claims that Activision Blizzard didn't disclose that, quote, the termination of Activision Blizzard and Bungie's partnership, giving Bungie full publishing rights and responsibilities for the Destiny franchise was imminent, meaning they didn't know the split was coming on their website announcing <laughs> the class actions. Any other claims, Lawrence? Uh, they say that uh, Activision didn't disclose that its breakup with Bungie would, quote, foreseeably have a significant negative impact on Activision Blizzard's revenue. So basically, you guys didn't tell us that this breakup was about to happen and it would really affect our bottom line. Uh, according to one report, a number of firms might focus on a comment that Activision made in a November filing called a 10Q. In that filing, Activision said that it had established a long-term alliance with Bungie to publish this game's universe, Destiny. Long-term alliance. And about two months later, they announced they were splitting with Bungie. <laughs> so the firms are pointing to that statement as being misleading, which makes sense. sense. Yeah, sure. Hey, that's fine. Yeah, speaking of bottom lines, the split seem to be a windfall for Activision, at least in the short term. Yeah, what did the uh, industry analysts say about this, Lawrence? Yeah, this is a friend of the show, Daniel Ahmad, oh, a, yeah. a Juge Leong enthusiast based on his Twitter profile. <laughs> Tweets a lot about Dynasty Warriors. Anyway, I found an SEC filing which shows that Activision, quote, recognized approximately 164 million in revenue as a result of the split with Bungie. Yeah, we're not 100% sure where that money's coming from. It is revenue, so it's not like they're just discovering money or, or they're recovering operating loss. This is different. Mm -hmm. Uh, it sounds like Bungie paid them 164 million to get the publishing rights back from Activision oh, wow. for oh, Destiny wow. 2. Yeah, either way, uh, Activision saw a sizable boost to its revenues. Ahmad was actually asked if Bungie paid that revenue number for Destiny 2, and he responded, quote, up to that amount, yes. Interesting. Wow. So there may have been some money exchanging hands for Bungie to get out of the relationship, 
that's probably part of this amount. The other amount, who knows where it came from. Hmm. It's kind of interesting. That's kind, of, that's kind of standard. Usually if you get out of a contract, you'll generally pay to yeah. get out of that contract. It's like breaking a lease, you got to pay the rest of it off. Activision also lost a lot of employees when it parted ways with Bungie. A 2016 Eurogamer article mentioned the developer has about 750 employees, so that's really no small potatoes. Uh, of course, over the long term, Bungie is probably betting that it will continue to see a stream of income from Destiny 2 to make it all worthwhile. And it's that loss of income on Activision's side that is really the foundation for this whole lawsuit. But where did Bungie get all that money. I'm really wondering. Yeah, to buy its yeah. game away. Yeah, to get away from Activision, it costs that much. Uh, Where's that coming from? Well, the answer is glorious China. Uh, <laughs> all hail. Uh, yeah. Do we know that? We gotta get views somewhere, Bruce, and there's a lot of people in China. <laughs> <laughs> they can't watch us though. So last summer it was announced that Bungie had taken a $100 million investment from the Chinese company NetEase. Oh, that's a lot of money. That's $100 at, million. Dollars. At the time, nobody knew what that meant. Bungie CEO Pete Parsons told the Wall Street Journal back then that, quote, a big part of our focus is to self-publish in the future, oh. as opposed to partnering with a publishing company like Activision. Huh. So they've been planning this for a while, and Bungie at least has said it out loud, or at yeah. least tried to in as many ways as they could. Yeah. I imagine that they would be legally liable if they had said, yo, we're trying to split with Activision way back then. Sure. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think this thing went down the only legal way it could, but that doesn't stop lawyers from wanting to dog pile on. We'll talk a little bit more about Glorious Shine in a little bit, but first let's talk about the history of some class action lawsuits that we've seen in the past. <laughs> Exciting. Uh, yeah, this isn't the first time we've seen a class action suit against a video game company in recent times, actually. Last year, another law firm said it was gathering info about a possible class action suit against Bethesda <laughs> on behalf of players who wanted a refund for Fallout 76. <laughs> Their argument was that Fallout 76 was released in a buggy, unplayable state, which was, and players deserve their money back, which it probably did. Despite Bethesda's policy on refunds being basically, nah, we don't get those. <laughs> yeah, last we checked though, it doesn't seem to have gone anywhere. Oh. But hey, maybe they'll look into Anthem next. <laughs> We did it. <laughs> yeah, I was we went, almost went a whole day. <laughs> that's actually blown up a few PS4s. Uh, so there's an actual dollar amount tied to that. Yeah, that's right. Oh, broken PS4. You it's broke my toy. Yeah. As for Activision, these are salad days for the publisher, to say the least. Despite having record revenues last year, the publisher announced last month that it was laying off about 800 employees. Yeah, yeah. very sad. Uh, then recently, it informed investors that those layoffs might negatively impact its business. In an SEC filing, it wrote that, quote, we may not realize the expected financial and operational benefits of our recently announced restructuring plan and its implementation may negatively impact our business. That's from page 12, bottom of the page. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so basically, Activision can't stop stepping on race. <laughs> As for Bungie, there's no uh, doubt that it's been caught in between Activision and the Destiny 2 player base these last few years. While it seems like Activision was pushing for more and more monetization for Destiny 2, it could be that Bungie ultimately sided with its players and wanted a less aggressive way to make money off its game. Lawrence, uh -huh. did it win its freedom? It did, but okay. it, you know, had to shake a shake the Chinese hands to do it. Oh, no. <laughs> that sounds so racist, doesn't I mean, it? I mean, that's true though. It's that's true. It's fascinating to put yourself in Bungie's position where Activision's probably bellowing at them for more microtransactions. The players like set the room on fire anytime they try to put anything in. So caught in between those two, they actually found the elegant solution. They found a third party to lend them some money, buy their independence back. This could be a like devil you know versus devil you don't kind of thing. And I'm not being xenophobic about it. I'm just like, we don't know how NetEase operates as a publisher, what kind of strings they have. They have a seat on the board as a result of their investments. So that's kind of strange. They do. Mm. Uh, there's no doubt that Chinese companies like Tencent are pouring more and more money into video game companies, especially Western ones. This is the latest example of it. Just be aware that this wave is coming. There's going to be Chinese influence over Western video games. You should probably be more concerned about that than those SJWs tearing your games apart. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Uh, and also, what does that mean for Bungie or other Western developed games in general? It's hard to say for now, at least until Destiny 2 ends the level where you go to Tibet and Ooh. just see how 100% awesome it is under Chinese control there. Oh. Guardian, find the light of socialism, spread it to all the poor people of the galaxy. Liberation from corrupt Western capitalism. The, the tower's gonna be Tenement Square, but nothing happens. It's just one <laughs> dude with his really groceries nice. going home. It was it's fine. Really nice. That's nice how place. it ended. Put it right in a Tiananmen thing, I'm glad when, you got Wouldn't there. it suck to rebel against your government and then get murdered? Yeah, yes. and then they, today's episode of Inside Gaming Daily is brought to you by Audible. Audible is a, an online subscription service, maybe something similar to a Netflix, but unlike something like Netflix, uh, every audiobook you get through Audible is yours to keep. And it gets better. Uh, every month you get three titles to choose from. You get one audiobook across their entire catalog. Again, yours to keep. And then you can pick two Audible originals. Uh, this actually includes exclusive audio fitness programs. They're kind of getting into that market. So if you're angling on 2019, new, new year, new you kind of vibes, Audible might be a good way to get there. Uh, they also have other features. They have something called Send to This Book. So if there's a book you really like and you want to get somebody else in on the action, you can send it to them. And if they haven't accepted a book through that service yet, or through that feature, they actually get to keep that book too. They also have something called Whisper Sync, which is really cool. It basically synchronizes your progress across multiple devices. So whether you're going from Kindle to Echo to your player on your phone or an app, it'll keep your progress across all of them. 
Uh, you can get a th free 30-day trial by going to audible.com slash inside gaming or texting inside gaming, it's all one thing with no space, to 500-500. Again, that's a 30-day free trial by going to audible.com slash inside gaming or texting inside gaming to 500-500. Thank you, Audible, for the sponsorship. Kitty Lolly's at. Um, Was that you? Uh, uh, it's anonymous, Adam. <laughs> uh, to which Brock responded, you got them already, we'd say. Oh, so he responded to that? There's yeah. a few, yeah. He's just being cool, dude. He's rapping with the kid. Where was Mark? <laughs> What the f Mark took the time off. You can't sit backwards yeah, you can't in that, that chair. That chair doesn't work that way. 